Kia good evening. Using emergency resources more effectively is behind moves to update and formalise services offered by fire and ambulance around New Zealand. Using the fire service as a first response to more medical call-outs allows for earlier assessment and care of patients and more effective use of resources, but the changes have had an effect on recruitment of volunteers. In Southland we've got three what we consider to be first responder brigades. So they are trained to a high level uh, by St John's uh, in partnership with us, our Ojai, Edendale and Dipton are our three. Uh, so that means they go to more medical type responses than the normal fire brigade. Um, but that's because they're more highly trained and, and, and more remote in terms of where the St John's uh, ambulances might be. Has this affected uh, recruitment for volunteers? Uh, it has a little bit, depending on the type of station. Um, in first responder brigades, it's actually an attraction, you know, so it helps them. Um, whereas in some brigades, um, because they're, they're, you know, they always come in, hey, look, we're a, um, a firefighting brigade. Well, our role has certainly changed in medical, um, natural disaster, those types of things are more in line with our, our, the way in which we respond. So we're not just going to fires anymore, we're going to a lot of other things. So that has meant a change in the way in which we uh, support our volunteers uh, in the types of vehicles, the types of equipment. So it's just part of the transition that we're, we're always making to, you know, to, to meet the, the public's need. And a change in, in the training as well. Very much so. Uh, we've, we've always had first aid training, primarily it's for our own staff to cover, cover each other. Um, but that obviously, you know, we've, we've got more gear, uh, so, and we're able to respond. And what that has meant is, uh, we were actually in partnership with St John's. We uh, they they come and do our, our high level medical training, um, and that means that you know when uh, St John's and the fire service arrive on the scene, uh, both agencies are, are aware and, and know what what each other can do in the, in the specifics of, the, of that training, so it works really well. Is this uh, perhaps the first step in, in uh, merging these two services together? Oh, I think that's probably too, too early to say. Um, that would be a, a, a decision a lot higher up than, than, than I am. Um, uh, yeah, this is, this is just where we've got the two agencies working together. The Invercargill Airport assumed international status for a few minutes last evening as French microlight pilot Eric Gouliane touched down after leaving Hobart earlier in the day. The Frenchman is using the microlight to circumnavigate the globe for charity and his love of flying. Mr Gouliane will spend a month in New Zealand before making his way across the Pacific into Asia, then back home. Yeah, I was planning to to arrive only on Saturday, but I checked the weather condition yesterday, and uh, there was uh, that was today the only day with a west wind. Uh, starting from tomorrow, it's a east wind, and uh, for at least uh, six, seven days. So I would have been stuck in Hobart. So I decided, okay, forget Hobart. I, I uh, jump uh, the other side, and I will enjoy uh, New Zealand uh, then. What's it like being at nine and a half thousand feet all alone and, and what really is quite a small plane over the ocean? Yes, that's a, <laughs> that's a, big, uh, that's a big problem. I mean, uh, everybody is scared uh, flying over the ocean because, of course, if you have an engine problem, especially with a single engine, it's a bit uh, annoying. So, um, OK, but I'm, uh, I'm very confident. I'm uh, very lucky always, so uh, no reason to have a problem more on the sea than on the, uh, on the earth. Hmm. What's your experience flying? Uh, very little experience. Two years I, I learned uh, two years ago, uh, but I've been flying uh, really a lot, uh, 500 hours uh, last year, and this year also it will be even more than 500 hours. Eric, what's the reason for this trip? The reason is first uh, pleasure, uh, because I love flying, I, look, I love uh, discovering uh, new places, new countries and uh, also to collect money for this association, Morija, who is uh, uh, making operation in Burkina Faso uh, on, uh, on uh, mainly children having uh, big, big uh, uh, problems of uh, walking or whatever. Where have you been? Well, you, you've basically been around the world, haven't you? Uh, I left uh, Switzerland the 15th of uh, September 
and uh, I went through Albania, Greece, uh, Cyprus, uh, Israel. I could uh, be able to obtain the uh, permission to land in Israel. I was very proud uh, because no, it was very, very complicated. And uh, all my friends were telling me, you will not even uh, get the authorization to overfly the country. So don't dream to land there. And I, I've been uh, landing in Ben Gurion in uh, Tel Aviv and uh, visit the country uh, for five days. So it was nice. And after uh, Jordan, Kuwait, uh, uh, Dubai, uh, Oman, uh, India, uh, Thailand, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, Bali, and then uh, Broome and also all Australia, one month in Australia. And I hope to make, uh, I will make uh, one month here. The City Council's Bluff Service Centre will be closed all Thursday as maintenance to the electricity network is carried out. The City Council's Corporate Affairs Manager, Stephen Ridden, says that he had received a notice of power interruption from electricity provider PowerNet. The notice says that the interruption is necessary to carry out line maintenance on the electricity network within the Bluff area. Power will be unavailable from 9.30am to 4pm. Mr Ridden says PowerNet has advised that if the work has to be postponed due to weather or other conditions, the alternative date was Friday the 6th of December. Council would post any news of postponement on its Facebook page. Stay with us after the break, the Southern Institute of Technology Awards for 2013. Welcome back. Last night, the Southern Institute of Technology honoured the students who had shown overall excellence through the academic year. A new scholarship was awarded for the first time, the Clearwater Award for Excellence in the Woodworking Trades. Hunter Andrews with more. For SIT Chief Executive Penny Simmons, the awards are a chance to reflect on how far the Institute has come since the introduction of zero fees in 2001, moving from 1,400 full-time equivalent students to today's role of 4,500 equivalents. Four and a half thousand now, um, up from 1,400 back uh, prior to the zero fees scheme. And I guess the other um, exciting thing for us is that over the last five or six years, we've really increased our international student numbers. So from less than a, a hundred international students back in 2007 to um, 550 international students this year. So that's been a great increase for the region as well. And ever applauding SIT achievements since zero fees, Mayor Tim Shadbolt. The zero fee scheme has just done so much. I would say it's the best investment our council or any council in New Zealand has ever made in the last three or four decades. It's the gift that keeps giving. It certainly is. It just goes on and on, gets better and better. The expansion in Queenstown, the expansion in Christchurch, it's just been fabulous. Guest speaker at the awards was Mazda New Zealand Managing Director Andrew Clearwater, whose parents Barbara and Norman established a $90,000 scholarship fund to reward the best in woodworking trades. My involvement has really come uh, through my mum and dad and the uh, generous scholarship uh, request they left to SIT for carpentry and joinery, which was in fact my uh, dad's background in Invercargill. We're recognising people coming through in carpentry and joinery. Uh, Dad was particularly uh, enjoyed the joinery side uh, and um, you know, had a lot of skill there. But you know, I think there's a real resurgence in that, that uh, industry, obviously with the rebuild of Christchurch, um, the, uh, the ongoing concerns about the uh, lack of uh, accommodation and, and houses in Auckland. But even uh, the growth, the growth in Invercargill, the population is increasing here and it's going to open up more opportunities for tradespeople. They've left almost 90,000 to SIT and we're one of five organisations that have been left that sort of money. Um, they were working class um, people, you know, worked hard all their lives really um, in, in the joinery and the construction industries and then at the end of their time they left money to charities throughout Southland. So what a wonderful legacy. Also presenting awards was Christchurch-based Harmer Limited General Manager Geoffrey Sutherland, who sees no end for the talent in the trades SIT produces each calendar year. 
A real privilege to come down and present awards to the young guys coming through on the trades. Um, fantastic to hear from Penny about all the statistics on the size of the institute down here, uh, the competitiveness within the New Zealand environment and what they're doing for the local economy down here and in fact the global economy. And we are desperately in need of those trades, aren't we? Yeah, we certainly are from Christchurch and we'll never be shorter than there for the next five to ten years, uh, we understand. So quality trades and getting the right skills and more importantly the safety message sent through the training organisations. It's not all over for tutors and students of SIT. Tonight it's the Trade Awards and next Friday, graduation. Hunter Andrews, South Today News. Over 900 lucky Invercargill seniors have been treated to Christmas Fair on behalf of the Invercargill Licensing Trust over the past two evenings. Around 450 seniors aged 70 plus were wined, dined and entertained on both Monday and Tuesday nights this week at the Ascot Park Hotel. Suzanne Prentice, Brian Townley and Margaret Bates entertained while seniors dined on traditional Christmas fare including turkey, ham, new potatoes and vegetables served by ILT head office staff and board members. The 900 seniors were randomly selected from around 1,200 who wrote requesting a spot at what's thought to be a unique event in New Zealand. ILT General Manager Greg Mulvey says the event's a tangible way to acknowledge and thank Invercargill's senior citizens. Fewer tertiary students are taking out student loans, but those that do are borrowing more. For the first time since interest-free student loans were introduced in 2006, the proportion of tertiary students taking out a student loan has fallen, just below 48% in 2012, but so have the number of students enrolled. The average amount borrowed in a year continued to increase to $7,820, according to Statistics New Zealand. In 2012, the number of students receiving support via the Student Allowance Scheme remained unchanged at 22.5%. And that's it from the news team tonight. Sport is along next after the weather from us. Good evening.